Welcome back to another Lionel product video. Ryan Kunkel, Dave Olson, to show you some of the fun features and facts behind our new legacy Reading T1 steam locomotives. These just delivered in December of 2016, uh, just the very end of the year. The project to get these to you started almost two years ahead of that uh, so that we could spend the time it took to do the proper research and development, tooling, and give you the best locomotives possible. The Reading T1 and Lionel and its history both have a nice long intertwined relationship with one another. Um, so from both a, a corporate perspective, a locomotive historic perspective, and also just from a guy who grew up as a kid within earshot of the old Reading's Lurgan branch, we wanted to make this one as, as good as it could be and, and rekindle all those fun memories for everybody. Before we go into all the details and, and features of these locomotives, I want to take the opportunity to thank a few individuals and organizations that have helped us out to make sure that we could bring you the most accurate uh, and enjoyable T1s possible. I'll start with uh, Stephen Harvey and the whole crew at the American Steam Railroad, who were very kind in helping me uh, come out and measure the real 2100 uh, to get all the dimensions as well as the work they're doing on the prototype. Please visit fireup2100.org uh, and check out all the work they're doing to get that locomotive back on the rails again very soon. Also want to give a special thanks to Todd Shanneth, who is the historian for the American Freedom Train. He's been a huge help not only on the T1, but also on the GS4 and the Freedom Train passenger cars, which you'll be seeing in the uh, not too distant future. And last but not least, want to give a special thanks to Louis Niederlander, who provided the sound files from the recordings from the original 2100, so that you've got that great sounding whistle. <laughs> these people and, uh, and several others who I'm sure uh, will be tossing potatoes at the screen because I've forgotten to mention you. Thank you very much for all the help you've given us uh, here at Lionel on this project and on others. It really makes these locomotives come alive for you. We did take, as I said, a lot of time on these locomotives to update uh, tooling and, and make new boilers, new details, bring these locomotives to life. The T1 went through several different iterations and looks over its lifetime which helps add to its, its fame and popularity. Mm -hmm. And so we recreated the locomotive in a couple of those key, key schemes uh, and key eras, including two we have pictured here in front of you. The uh, 2100 shows the way these looked pretty much in day-to-day -day service on the Reading. Uh, what's sort of become known later in here is a sort of the freight uh, service scheme, even though it was just their, their regular original livery. Uh, then we've also done the units in the slightly glitzed up Reading Rambles. Uh, decoration where you see some extra yellow trim uh, here and there on the locomotives. And then for this first run of T1s, we did two of the uh, special excursions, including, of course, the American Freedom Train and the Chessie Steam Special. So with this long uh, career, both in service as, as these very unique uh, locomotives on the Reading, and then there's their fabled excursion career, it's a fun locomotive that can fit into almost any era on, on your railroad. Also want to note that um, Numbers, the other, one of the numbers that we did in the uh, original paint scheme uh, for the Reading was one of the locomotives that was leased to the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, during the summers as well as they were short on power. So if you're a, a Pensy, Pensy fan and want to deviate a little bit from the world of Bell Pair fireboxes, we've got a, a nice a engine here that looked just great pulling a string of uh, GLA hoppers as well. Turn it over to Dave and he'll walk you through some of the fun features of these new engines. Thank you, Ryan. The Legacy T1 uh, has all the features of a high-end steam engine that you have all come to expect from Lionel. Now, starting front to back, we have a all newly tooled frame and die cast shell, as well as a die cast tender shell. We have um, the RCMC, which is your standard Legacy PCB that gives you uh, speed control and lash ups and everything else that uh, you come to expect Legacy to do. Now starting on the, the front, front we here, have the we have a scale dummy coupler that comes installed on the engine. Packaged with the engine is also a scale O-gauge coupler so that you can double head the engine if you desire. We have the headlight up here on the uh, center and front of the for, uh, firebox, as well as a brass bell here on top. And this is the main smokestack. And then coming back here under the sand dome, if you take that off, again, you have the run program you... switch, the Odyssey switch the main smoke switch and the aux smoke switch, which is for the whistle steam that is right here. And there's also a smoke fill hole for the whistle steam that is underneath the hatch. And that does seal when you put the lid back on. Right, now for a more detailed view of the cab area in front of the tender. 
On the rooftop, we do have the opening and closing air vents. The cab does have a cab light inside as well as two hand-painted crew figures and the firebox flicker. The ash pan glow does come on when the engine is in motion. And we do have the wireless tether between the engine and the locomotive. And the locomotive um, and tender also feature the kinematic coupling so that on the tender when the engine is going around a corner you can get the clearance and then on a straight you have that more prototypical gap between the engine and tender. Alright and now for a detailed view of the rear of the tender. Underneath the water hatch we do have the main volume control potentiometer and then further back on the rear we have the backup light and we have the electric coupler which can be thrown from the legacy or TMCC remote and the tender also features the track IR sensor for legacy LCS. All right, and now we will showcase some of the great sounds and smoke features this engine has to offer. Let me start by running the extended startup sequence. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? I copy that. Over. Okay, start her up. Stand by for track orders. Yes, sir. We'll fire her up. Out. All right, let me start by showing you some of the crew talk. Dispatcher here, you're clear to pull. Over. Acknowledged. I've got clear boards. Out. You have a sound of water being added to the tender. My water's full. Over. Copy that. Out. Do you have the steam blowdown sound effect? You also have the bell. And you have my favorite part of this engine, which is that great whistle. And it does have the whistle steaming tone effect as shown earlier in the video. Let's uh, move the engine a little bit so I can show you some of the other great features. You can notice the ash pan glow effect here uh, on the ash pan underneath the cab. We hope all of you that have these already are enjoying them uh, and getting some good miles out of them on your layouts at home. These, like all of our uh, scale high-end locomotives, were a build-to-order product. So whatever we've made is out there at the dealers or out there in your hands already. So uh, we hope if you haven't gotten one yet and you've been in, enticed to buy one by this or the much better videos you've seen elsewhere on YouTube of these locomotives in action, see your dealers right away and, and pick one of these up. We understand they're moving off the shelves very quickly. I pity the fool who doesn't get one.